One of the exciting things as the lead curator for this exhibition has been bringing together all of these disparate periods of time through 250 million years, all of that Queensland scientific research that the Queensland Museum of Paleontologists have been doing over so many years, embellishing them in beautiful artworks that fill the space to take these fossils that are quite obscure and hard to interpret and present an environment to any visitor to the Queensland Museum of what this state looked like over a 250 million year period. I mean, it really does take a village to present and build an exhibition like this. So it starts with quite a small core team who come up with the fundamental ideas. And then as we move through, it builds. This is a really great opportunity for the museum because it's a permanent gallery and that, that happens really maybe every 10 years. So this was a really big intervention for us to be undertaking. And so we're wanting to explore new stories, bring these stories to life a bit more. Being a curator for a gallery like this involves selecting specimens and how they should be displayed. To get this out as an exhibit is a very approachable way for people to come in, uh, see what we've uh, learned from what, what we've collected and uh, how it fits into the bigger story of, uh, of life on Earth and also particularly here, specifically in Queensland as well, what do these fossils mean for the ancient history of Queensland. Once the specimen list has been created, that's when it gets very exciting because we have to look at each specimen and determine how it's best to display, both aesthetically, but also for preservation. Because some of our displays will be on the floor for five to 10 years, and we need to make sure that that specimen is gonna be securely and safely supported throughout its display duration. Previously these fossils and original objects were shown on open display and the request from conservation and collection management was that they would be in showcases to protect them. So we dug through our deep dives of our archives of our inventory of stuff and we brought back to life showcases that were in another exhibition more recently and an exhibition that we'd put on 10 years ago and that became the building blocks of how we would construct the exhibition. We then had all these backs of the showcases, so it's like, well, what do we put there? And that was where I was going back and forwards with Scott, and he said, well, I know this prehistoric illustrator and I could work with him to create these environments. And I'm like, yes, how incredible. What an opportunity to actually, rather than just show fossils in the place that they were found, give them their environment that they actually lived in. And so this was a really exciting moment really uh, meant that these repurposed showcases can bring a whole new language to the exhibition. I think of the joinery that's in this space, 90% has been repurposed or given a second life, so we're really proud about that. One of the exciting things is that this exhibition has actually expanded its purview. So we've got the dinosaurs, but we also have some of the fossil plants that have turned up in Queensland as well. And you'll see as you walk through the exhibition, the incredible changes that have occurred in Queensland over the last 250 million years. This specimen, the Combarasaurus, is the best preserved ankylosaur in Australia and one of the best preserved in the world. It's almost complete. The animal's quite squashed in the fossil form, so to have it actually standing upright in the picture and the maquette, it just brings that life form to the visitor. I think it's great. We have such a diverse audience that comes through an exhibition, so we need to make sure it's accessible. We need to think of all age groups, all demographics. We want to inspire learning and knowledge in young kids, so we try and make it as fun and engaging as possible. The one thing that sets this exhibition apart from pretty much any paleontological exhibition is the use of technology in recreating these extinct animals. And what we've been able to use is 3D printing. 2D art transformed into a 3D model, and then that 3D model put through a 3D printer to create life-size reconstructions. It's taking the next step in digitisation and how we present fossils for children, for adults, for anyone. They'll get to experience them in a way that we never imagined you could. And I think that's what makes this display so special.